on my count. One, two, three. I want us all to say count the picture. One, two, three. Gambling addiction. Excellent. Because I think it's so important we have to talk. Uh, Josh just mentioned it, as I mentioned it today, in terms of talking. It really, really is important in terms of getting those conversations going. Um, I've been from an experienced background when you go through my story shortly. I'm founding CEO of Red Car Gambling Support Project, and we are about education and awareness and prevention of gambling violence. I've had a serious gambling addiction for about 25, 30 years. This was Tracy earlier, fantastic speech. And in terms of how long it took her to talk, I think it was 15 years. Uh, myself from 1990 to 2014. Again, that's right. 34 years, yeah. And then hold it up. 34 years it took for me to talk. Uh, so if we go forward on the slides, Tony Kelly, founder of Red Card Gambling Support Project, as I said, I am a former freshman footballer. Life was great for me in terms of where I was 20, 25 years ago. Uh, I before, was fortunate enough to achieve my boyhood dream. Uh, I think Steve touched on it earlier about in terms of dream and aspirations of being a footballer and a stand for young boys across the country. I uh, was fortunate enough to get that opportunity in 1990 when I signed for Stoke City. Uh, and yeah, life did change. I did have a lot of money, etc. But during that period, of eight years as a professional footballer, I lost half a million pounds. So I'm just going to repeat that. Half a million pounds to gamble addiction. Land through the two houses we possess, uh, mental health issues, bankruptcy. From a bankruptcy, when we go to the slide in terms of gambling harms, it's two hundred well, hundred and ninety two thousand pounds bankruptcy file, which is really first two creditors. So you can imagine the impact it had on my life. And I've listened to the lived experience today, we're walking through that journey. It's absolutely horrendous. So that's why I say it's so important that we talk, we open up, we have conversations. Um, I was at an event yesterday with Gamble Aware around stigma. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to remove that stigma. We've got to break down those barriers and talk about it openly in a safe space. Because at the end of the day, it's a mental health disorder. That's what gambling addiction is. Yeah, it's widely recognized as a public health issue, so it should be. We talked earlier, Lisa mentioned about advertising, we're saturated with it. So we really do have to acknowledge it as a public health issue and a serious addiction that ruins lives on a daily basis and takes lives on a daily basis. Okay? So the impacts, these are some of the impacts that I had. Uh, some of these have been mentioned today in terms of impact on my family. I know she won't mind. My sister's in the room today. Um, and in terms of my family, I borrowed money off every single member of my family. That's five of us, my sister, parents, friends. So we talk about impacts in terms of dynamics of family, how relationships break up, broke up. So with my sister, yeah, I'm proud of her. She's still by me. It's not the case with, with all families. I've spoken to people that don't even talk to their brothers and I don't even talk to their sisters. So those relationships are fractured and broken down. So massive impact on the family. Oh, by the way, Pat. Um, that's my sister there, by the way, because she's not blue. Yeah. You know, you go to town to get back later on because I've run out of petrol. <laughs> yeah. Imagine how she feels 25 years ago. Right. Broken relationships, lost friendships, you will lose friends along the way. Um, that phone will eventually stop. Yeah, it's only 50 pounds, I'll pay you back next week. Yeah, that will continue. So I've lost friends along the way. Crying. Uh, our team has lived experience, the red card team. That's the model I wanted to bring, bring to the table. That's the model that we've adopted. We have Harge on that table there, one of the red card directors of the Asian community. So, in terms of you know lost friendships, there were some great friends that I've lost along the way. But we'll go on to crime. We were just mentioning one of our team members stole three hundred and seventy thousand pounds. So I'm going to try out. It's in the public domain. It's public knowledge. Uh, so when we talk about crime, I know Tony was involved in the criminal justice system, and he stole three hundred seventy grand from his employer after he was gambling. And that was over, over a three year period. So the impacts are huge. Repossessions, I mentioned it earlier. Had two hats to repossess, had three cars to repossess. I remember one incident where I think it was a car, I think, because I went from Stoke to Cardiff to Berry to Hall, went to eight clubs. Um, and I had to pay my car pay because I knew the car was going to be repossessed. I'm sure the lived experience I've been down this road. 
And uh, I knew that the car was pretty repossessed and up, but it, um, it's funny when I think back now. But I actually used to park my car three or four six streets away because I know, I know the guy couldn't come and take the car. Uh, yeah, they got their tactics, they found the car eventually. So repossessions, yes. Lost career progression. What I'll say, six or seven years I've lost to the game from uh, 22 to 30 with my professional career. So I had sporadic form, mental health issues, sleep deprivation, missing training, all the rest of it. Yeah, serious issues in terms of my career progression because I should have played professional football up to 36, 37, 38, which is generally the average age of professional footballer. But my professional football career was over at 30 years old, and that was all due to the impact of Scandal Houston that I had, not only through professional football, but through my actual life. So yeah, lots of different, uh, bankruptcy is the main one, I suppose. We talked about the financial harms, I mentioned it earlier, 32 creditors. You know, we can go on about irresponsible lending and payday loans, etc. But yeah, 32 creditors, 192,000, 2010. And I think that was, I suppose, that was the start of my recovery. But the real start of my recovery was 2013-14. My sister helped me and advised me in terms of going public. And we can talk about why I said it's so important to talk and get that monkey off your back. Acknowledge it, accept it. That's the first step. You've got to accept and acknowledge you've got a problem. And then, obviously, ask for support. So 2013-14, published, published my first book called Red Card. Sorry, my mum. And then went on the old red sofa to do this breakfast. And I think from that moment, when I shared my story with the nation, that's when I realized I'm not alone. That's when it really, really hit home. And I thought, wow, this gambling addiction is absolutely huge. And the phone calls, the feedback, the email, etc. And I realized how much it resonates with so many people, you know, families, etc. So that was the start of the recovery. And from that, it was a question of what we're going to do next. I had some counselling, um, listened to David, listened to others about that recovery journey, and it is different for everybody. But mine was counselling, family support, and then also in 2017, on a personal level, and I know there's a diverse group here today, but on a personal level, I got baptised in 2017, and the Christian faith is absolutely massive in my life, not just in terms of Instead of sustaining the dark of gambling, but about my life and me personally as, a, as an individual and how I go about my life and how I live my life and how I treat people. So it was massive for me. So, as I said, the recovery journey, you know, there's people here who have been through the movie process, whether it's CBT, whether it's GA, like David. That recovery journey is how it suits you. Yeah, it's an individual thing, it's how it suits you and how it, how it helps you. Remember. So, decided to set up Red Card Gambling Sport Project. CIC company, as I said earlier, it's about education, awareness, and prevention. We are massive in terms of education. We talked a lot today about young people. Uh, we are connected with Harrogate Council. Uh, we've had agreement in terms of workshops. We're going to go into shortly. But I just think early education is so important. When we're talking about 11 year olds, I know we mentioned today about the gay element, the gentleman in the black there. I'll call you a gentleman if that's all right. <laughs> In, in the back there, mention, you mentioned about the um, gaming, the correlation between gaming and gambling, and it is huge because when we get to the workshops and we get to those that section where we're talking about gaming and gambling, the conversations they you have to finish short because it's on and on, and we, they're, they're open and we're aware of how much money is spent. We can't still understand how the gambling commission does not recognise gaming as a form of gambling, risk and reward, uncertain outcomes, X amount of money spent. Come on. So, I'm moving on to what we do now, as you can see here. Red Club, Young Person Delivery, we do e learning courses, we do CPD, we do uh, telephone conversation about prices before. Referral to GANCARE, so we've had lots of phone calls from various people, and we refer them to GANCARE, and we assess, and then they come to a program, whatever, whatever treatment they need. Uh, but they're the kind of service we do. And our main work is delivering workshops nationally across the country with a national organisation. Uh, and that could be a school, it could be a mental health, it could be a charity, uh, it could be a college, university. We've got a football project going on now with the non league football sector. Everybody and anybody, because we do have to remember that it is literally anybody and everybody. Different backgrounds, gender, status, ethnicity, because everybody and anybody can get addicted to gambling. So that's what we do. There's this in one of the schools. We have a great facilitating team, and we decided to build our model on the lived experience. And you 
heard it today, how powerful lived experience is. You know, I think it's important that audiences listen to people that walk in those shoes. Because it's very hard when you're talking to someone about these things, about me, about this and that, about your addiction journey, for them to actually really understand what it's like. You know, because when you're in the grips of someone that's not an addiction, as, as we've heard today, it's absolutely horrendous. But it's hard for, for someone that walks in those shoes to fully understand it. And here, Sarah and Harrogate Secondary Schools, as I said, uh, so we have agreements with, to work with Harrogate Council, and we're working with other councils now, we're working with North, sorry, North Warwickshire Council, Birmingham Council now, and I think it's really important that local authorities come on board in terms of education awareness. So as you can see there, we've got exposure to gambling through black parents, it's one of the things that's came out of the workshops. A lot of the young people are talking about how much gambling their parents are doing, and their dad's always on the phone, or mother on the phone, etc. always on the phone, losing the time. Etc. So that awareness sponsorship in football really important. I know there's going to be a change of legislation in terms of putting the shirt sponsorship for Premier League clubs in 2026. But imagine the thousands and thousands of young kids that go to football matches across the country, exposed to gambling, and the celebrities endorsing it, through the fencing, stadium betting, the whole shebang. So that's where we are with young people, sadly. Financial harm, shocked at gambling related suicide. I know we touched on it today about taking lives, and we, and we have to be real. We have to be able to tell people that we're real. 